Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, Today is our topic of discussion, intestinal obstruction from the chapter of gastrointestinal emergency. So this is what our content, so introduction to the inter intestinal obstruction and then what are the causes, classification, pathophysiology part, clinical features and then how we are diagnosing both pre-hospital and then in-hospital, management and then finally complications. So the coming into uh, introduction of the intestinal obstruction. So what is meant by intestinal obstruction? In a simpler way, if I want to tell means, so the intestinal obstruction means the intestine unable to propel its content more distally. That is called the intestinal obstruction. So it is the inability of the intestinal tract to propel its content distally. That is called the intestinal obstruction. If we want to structure definition means here we can read intestinal obstruction, the inability of the intestinal tract to allow for the regular passage of food and then bowel content. So the bowel content include, so what are the bowel, uh, normal content will be there, the gas will be there, mean the same time some amount of undigested or partly digested food will be there. Third thing, secretions will be there like pancreatic secretion and then biliary tract secretion. So all things will come under the content. So this is the definition. So second statement we give an, it is secondary to mechanical obstruction or adynamic ileus. So the thing is, so whenever you are uh, talking about or whenever you are hearing about obstruction, you have to think about the two major things. First one, the obstruction because of any intrinsic factors means uh, if you are considering any tubular organs, if you are considering any vascular origin means then you, are, you can modify the term like a intrinsic. Instead of intrinsic, you can tell about the intraluminal, okay, intraluminal or intrinsic or internal. So whichever way you can uh, pronounce, but based on the area, we are modifying the terminology. That is the thing. So that is why. So if wherever uh, obstruction happened, that is because of any internal factor or external factor or you can tell us a intrinsic factor or extrinsic factor or you can tell us a intraluminal factor or extraluminal factor. So in this way you have to think. Bec uh, in the case of bowel obstruction, so what are the things will come under the intraluminal if any uh, like a stenosis condition or any stitches because of any surgery the person may go through, uh, gone through in a previous history because of that the person may develop any stitches or that might be any abscess, okay. These are the things comes under the intrinsic factors. So what are the extrinsic factors or external factors or extraluminal factors because of any like um, you uh, have any tumors or neoplasm means automatically it will put pressure over that uh, outside region thereby the intraluminal diameter will reduce so thereby intestinal obstruction will happen. Here it is about the mechanical obstruction. Here the peristalsis will be there because of any foreign bodies that obstruction is occurring. Second thing related with a new uh, uh, sorry, uh, peristaltic movement that is a dynamic ileus. So being in a gastrointestinal tract from the esophagus to the until your uh, colon we have a peristaltic movement right. So if any peristaltic movement is absent means that is the condition called the paralytical ileus or the a dynamic ileus. So two reasons only first one is a mechanical obstruction or you can uh, tell us a uh, intrinsic extrinsic factors. Second one is a a dynamic ileus or functional related causes. Okay. In the first condition, in this mechanical obstruction, your uh, paralytical movement will be there. But in the case of second condition, a dynamic ileus, paralytic movement won't be there. This is the difference. So we told the same thing only mechanical causes, tumor, neoplasm, stenosis, hernia, and then abscess. A functional obstruction like uh, amyloidosis and then muscle dystrophy, endocrine disorders like diabetic mellitus and then neurological disorders. So muscular dystrophy means it is one of the uh, inherited disorder. In this case what will happen when muscle will uh, partially that will get weak and then it will get breakdown. This is one of the condition also. Uh, this condition also can lead to the bowel obstruction. And then uh, this is the summary or overview of the causes. So here we given a three columns, duodenum, small bowel and then colon. In duodenum part, same thing only stenosis, stitches and then foreign body. 
then small bowel wise addition hernia intussusception lymphoma and then stitches intussusception means it is a telescopic appearance of the your colon telescopic means so that colon itself that will fold inside so that is a telescopic appearance of your uh, intestine that can occur in the either small bowel or large bowel also and then in coming into uh, again colon that is a large bowel carcinoma uh, and then ulcerative colitis valvulus valvulus means it is a mal rotation of your colon so usually it will uh, in a normal procedure from the normal posture it will differ or the rotation will be different that is called the valvulus or mal rotation diverticulus intussusception and then pseudo obstruction those are the some common causes for the bowel obstruction so what are the classification we are classifying based on three on the basis of first based on your peristalsis so the same thing only peristalsis if it is present means peristalsis will be present with the mechanical obstruction second thing peristalsis will absent that is the adynamic condition or paralytic cilius and then second thing on the basis of duration whether that is a subacute or acute or chronic condition on the basis of location whether that is the obstruction happen in small bowel or large bowel and then coming into pathophysiology so the same the here the pathophysiology we are going to deal with the two regions first region according to your uh, absorption related second hand we are going to uh, deal regarding with the vascular vascularity related first thing will go with an, that absorption related things so first of all what will happen means normal bowel contains the gas as well as the gastric secretion food so already we told that intraluminal accumulation of gastric biliary pancreatic secretion continues even if there is no oral intake if the person uh, doesn't have any orally also even though the secretion will be there so whenever the obstruction develops the bowel becomes congested and then intestinal contains fail to absorb so because the in that luminal so we know small intestine is a major portion for your absorption of the nutrition and then water again uh, you are coming into large intestine that is also taking part in the absorption of water so whenever this area get obstructed obstructed then the problem will arise in the hand, uh, problem will arise in the absorption part that is why the content fails to absorb first thing so this is one of the key factor problem in the absorption second thing ultimately what it will lead to means so in definition part we told the intestinal unable to propel it content distally because of the obstruction so what the body will try to do means because of that increased pressure it can't move distally so automatically it will try to uh, push out through the proximal region means if it is if unable to reach out distally means the whatever content that obstructed or congested that will come out through the oral cavity again with the uh, abnormal direction that is why it will come through the proximal route so the automatically that the person will present with the vomiting and then decrease to oral intake so the vomiting reason we told the content congested content it will come through the proximal region that is the reason for the vomiting some rather time in a extreme bowel obstruction the person can uh, the person can vomit fecal material also that is a horrible uh, cases also some rather time you can encounter so and then decrease to oral intake uh, follow means why means so because of the fear of that vomiting and then because of the fear of the abdominal pain the person won't take uh, fluid or the person won't take nutrition through orally this is the reason for the decrease oral intake so he told vomiting is a one thing second thing decrease oral intake because of that what will happen automatically your body will lose electrolyte and then your body won't get uh, sufficient nutrition so these are the things will start to develop so volume depletion will be there chemo concentration electrolyte imbalance also will occur this is the things regarding the absorption second thing coming into your vascular related so as like the same thing whenever the resistance to your blood flow will increase means there won't be a adequate blood supply to the uh, specific part that will occur right so not alone your uh, vascular lymphatic also again if it is a more resistant to the lymphatic flow also it won't that uh, normal uh, pa passage won't occur 
so because of that what will happen easily the area will become ischemic and then infarct finally it leads to the necrosis and the necrosis is a ideal site for your sepsis and the bacteria and then it will develop it leads to the sepsis and then septicemia septic shock everything will follow it may lead to the renal failure or shock also this is the two entity so uh, so for management purpose also we have to remember first thing vomiting and then electrolyte imbalance third thing is a sepsis septic shock related thing so okay this sequence so we we told the one by one sequence this can occur more rapidly so based on the your bowel obstruction that uh, condition it can severity of the bowel obstruction it can occur more rapidly or mainly in the rapidly in a closed loop obstruction with no pros proximal escape of the bowel contract we told right if the distally is blocked means automatically the body will propel out the content through the proximal region if the proximal route also obstructed means then only that process all process vomiting electrolyte imbalance and then your sepsis septic shock ischemia will uh, will follow very quickly so some example for the closed loop bowel obstruction like incarcerated hernia complete colon obstruction in the presence of closed ileocecal wall okay and then coming into clinical manifestation initial symptom is usually crampy that muscle uh, pain will be there and then this is like a wave like and then colicky pain and then classical symptoms is a, as usual nausea and vomiting constipation without treatment abdominal pain may increase as a result of perforation ischemia will be there fever tachycardia these are the signs of the inflammation and then infection and then absence of passage of flatus it may leads to the abdominal distress also because of the gas also unable to escape so automatically your abdominal will get distended so diagnosis mean this is the assessment point what we are looking in the pre hospital first one what are the things we are going to look uh, look inspection part first uh, in we have to check about the abdominal distance means abdominal distance how you will measure means so you have to take the tap and then you have to uh, set the site of or at the level of umbilicus you have to measure first then after some time again you have to measure this is called the abdominal grit assessment okay so at the level of umbilicus so you have to check for the progress of the abdominal distance so again we told if it is a in hospital means we have ultrasonography everything but in a pre hospital you can go for the that tap at the level of umbilicus abdominal grit assessment and then uh, if the person present with a a dynamic ileus may also have a, some abdominal distension associated with a dimness or absent bowel so scars will be there any visible peristalsis there means you can check scar because of uh, we told uh, stitches also one of the cause right so because of any previous surgical history there might be a chance of stitches for that reason you have to check for the any scar is there or not and then second thing auscultation so again so here first step is a inspection second step is a auscultation so and then mechanical obstruction that will produce a active high pitched bowel sound with an occasional rustles so the difference we told in the paralytic ileus or a dynamic ileus there is no peristalsis because of that no peristalsis we can't auscultate the or we can't hear any uh, this sound that uh, bowel sounds because the bowel sound is creating because of that paralytic movement only if the peristalsis absent means we can't hear any we can't auscultate any bowel sound but in the case of mechanical obstruction what the body will do means that will uh, the bowel sound will be in a more hyperactive manner so that is why high pitched bowel sound and then hyperactive manner we can auscultate and then coming into palpation so if any muscle uh, any mass like arnomegaly or your uh, some other uh, like if you are feeling any tumor neoplasm related tenderness abdominal guarding abdominal tenderness also we can check for percussion wise tympani and then dullness note because of the uh, collection of uh, your uh, this thing air so we can note out the tympani and then dullness note so these are the laboratory studies what we are going through in hospital cbc and then electrolyte level if the person develop dehydration means so by checking the oral mucosa skin target along with an laboratory like a hematogrit blood urea nitrogen creatinine also useful markers and then other indication so based on the, if the person because of any uh, 
because of bowel obstruction if the person develop any other complication means to check that urine specific gravity ketone urea lactate level so mainly lactate level where we will check the septic shock related so and then shock related cases if he develop the or not to check that lactate level metabolic acidosis so some of the thing procalcitonin also we can check for so imaging wise again we have ultrasonography colonoscopy sigmoidoscopy and then computer tomography x-ray wise you have to take the erect abdominal x-ray or flat upright abdominal radiography means so you, if the person is uh, a uh, conscious oriented able to stand means you have to take the person in a standing position uh, x-ray or if the person is unconscious means you have to make the person flat flatly you have to take and then erect abdomen you have to take the x-ray that is called the uh, erect abdomen or flat upright abdominal x-ray what is the reason for this means so this is the x-ray you can see this is the diaphragm this white line is a diaphragm okay so this is the diaphragm in the below the diaphragm you can see some amount of air right so this is called the air under the diaphragm in the case of perforation what will happen the normally we told bowel contains some amount of air so the air will escape out and then it will collect in your peritoneal region but this is the topmost region it can't escape more than that because diaphragm is a roof for the abdominal cavity so it will hit over the diaphragm that is the reason we are asking the person to take a flat x-ray because the air have a tendency to go up so if the person is standing means the air will come up if the person uh, lying supine position means erect position means there also the air goes up so this is the reason uh, we are taking the flat abdominal x-ray and then the x-ray findings air under the diaphragm the diagnosis perforation so this is what they are uh, in hospital and then pre hospital management so as like we told in pre hospital you have to think about the vomiting and then you have to think about the uh, the person sometime he he or she may develop shock condition and then sepsis and then we told uh, electrolyte imbalance so those are the things you have to manage if the person have a vomiting means firstly we have to secure the large bore iv cannula if it is permits means you can take the blood samples to, so thereby we can easily process uh, while if you are handing over the in hospital means so if it is permitted or in your policy if it is accepted means then you can collect but uh, some rather hospital if you are collecting sample also again they will collect uh, they will recollect so if it is accepted if it is in your policy then you can go for second thing vomiting you have to manage with an antiemetic third thing for electrolyte imbalance uh, you have to go with a more physiologically adapted solution like ringer lactate hartman solution or like cabilite plasmolite those are the things we can administer to the person then if it is a sepsis related means again if the person is developing any hypotension means that is also we have to take like if uh, if it is not refractory with the fluid volume means then you have to go with them like vasopressors uh, vasoactive agents like a noradrenaline so this is the major symptomatic uh, treatment or major initial steps we have to take in the bowel obstruction what we are doing in the in hospital the same thing only uh, fluid resuscitation mean the same time some rather time the person may require for the surgical uh, intervention also like a paralytic ileus cases some rather time the person may go for the surgical intervention or any intussusception like or any um, stenosis case also they will go for the surgical intervention and then the main thing they will decompress the stomach uh by the uh, in uh, inserting the nasogastric tube that is also one of the thing and then if indicated means they will go with and some uh, broad spectrum antibiotic like uh, piptas and then ampicillin sulfatum clindamycin meropenum those are the things and then if the diagnosis uncertain as like we told a dynamic ileus or paralytic ileus they will go for the surgical uh, approach also in pseudo obstruction cases colonoscopy is a both diagnostic and then therapeutic approach surgery is not indicated in the case of this one so this is the di difference between the paralytic ileus and then normal mechanical bowel obstruction so the pain wise in paralytic ileus it will be like a mild to moderate but in bowel obstruction it is a moderate to severe location wise in paralytic ileus it will be a diffuse pain but in a bowel obstruction cases it will be like a localized pain physical examination in paralytic ileus there will be a mild distension 
with or without tenderness decreased bowel zone this is the one clinical factor that will differentiate between the paralytic release and the bowel obstruction but in the case of bowel obstruction there will be a high pitched bowel zone mild distension and then tenderness will be there laboratory wise in paralytic release possible dehydration changes we can see uh, dehydration mean then we can uh, there will be a derangement in the hematocrit value creatinine value and then uh, bowel obstruction wise there will be a changes in the leukocytosis and then imaging wise both condition and paralytic release may be normal bowel obstruction abnormal condition so you can see the some obstructed means you can see the step ladder pattern like uh, gas fluid gas fluid those are the changes and all something will happen in the bowel obstruction so those are the some x rays we can go through and then treatment wise uh, in paralytic ileus observation and hydration in uh, bowel obstruction wise mechanical obstruction nasogastric tube and then surgery is indicated Finally, complication, intestinal perforation can occur, peritonitis because of the perforation, sepsis mostly in uh, which delay in diagnosis and then treatment cases, intra-abdominal abscess, dehydration, electrolyte disturbances also happen, rarely it can cause uh, multiple organ dysfunction or failure, finally it can lead to the death if you are not treating in a correct time. So, do your best, Shalom.